Hi, right, Bill Henshaw again. More current events that you may have noticed on the internet with the Democrats now threatening to reconstruct the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, the article I downloaded wasn't too great on specifics in there, but I had to ask myself, what the hell are they talking about? And with the knowledge they have about history, I'm well aware of the fact, for example, in 1865, that Congress reduced the number of justices on the court from nine to seven. They had a retirement and a death that occurred, and they were able to do that to prevent Andrew Johnson, our greatest president, from making any appointments to the court in a critical time period in the history of the court. Had we had two more conservative votes on there, what could have happened in the McArdle case? In the McArdle case, they decided five to three against the Reconstruction Act. If that vote would have been six to three or seven to two, and Congress tried to remove the appellate jurisdiction of the court, which unfortunately it has the power to do, a rare error by the framers, but they did put that in there. Then that decision might have come down, the Reconstruction Act would have gone away immediately, and the 14th Amendment doesn't exist. That's how important this was. So I'm saying to myself, well, what are the Democrats thinking here? I mean, there's a lot of things that could go on here. Um... So I don't know, um, you know, what they're thinking. Now, they could pass laws, by the way, that would more authoritatively restrict the appellate jurisdiction of the court. And that's seemingly not good for us, but if they do it, these idiots don't have a clue, and most of them went to what, Harvard, Yale, all these damn Ivy League schools, don't have a clue. That would help us more than anything, because we can't reach the appellate side of the court anyway, for the same reason that William McArdle wasn't able to do it in 1867 in that case. So if that's the case, now we have to go on the original side to the U.S. Supreme Court. And wouldn't you know, yours truly is right now preparing a petition for a clash action suit for a writ of habeas corpus. Probably something they've never seen there in 230 years, but they're going to be seeing it. I've already sent a love letter to John Roberts and says, here, I'm coming, and it's about time you bastards start to do your job here. If you did it 100 years ago, I wouldn't have to be here. Neither would any of my friends on bringing along with me. And any of you that want to join that, by the way, or get more information, send me an email at youwinningcourt at gmail.com on my materials called Constitutional Defense Document Packets, and I'll send you the information and the information about the class action suit. And this would cover, quote-unquote, civil cases as well, not just criminal ones, and for very, very good reasons. So, yeah, if they do that, that helps us. If they restrict it even more, screw you. We'll just go on the other side, and we have the power to do that as state citizens. Because Article 3, Section 2, what does it say? In all cases in which a state shall be a party, the Supreme Court shall have original jurisdiction. But they don't want you to know it. I got a book, not the latest edition, but Volume 7 of the Supreme Court practice, 1,200 pages. Do you know what they have on original jurisdiction as far as you and I are concerned, people? Do you know what they have in there? page and a half. They don't want you to know anything about it. But it's there, the court recognizes it, and once you learn, you get my document package and you learn this stuff, it's not me saying it. It's the nine old farts, it's the framers of the Constitution. We have these rights, we have this power, you just have to be made aware of it. And just like me 50 years ago, I'm sure you didn't hear a thing about this in 10th grade civics either. So... You know, that said, the other thing they might seriously consider doing, and this would be somewhat without precedent, but as I mentioned, they reduced the court at one time to seven, uh, is to reduce the court to seven now and remove the least senior justices, Kavanaugh and uh, Gorsuch, the Trump appointees, and now set up for the coming presidential election, quote-unquote, next year, hoping they can win the election at which point they'll restore the court to nine and get a Democratic president can, that can appoint three and reverse the process and now give the Democrats a left-wing majority on the Supreme Court. Without precedent, the Constitution doesn't expressly say you can't do that with justices already sitting. I mean, that's, you know, do you, or, what, or what they may do is retire these justices and give them a salary for being a retired justice. Who the hell knows? But the article wasn't strong on specifics. If I hear more about this when our next two videos, I will update you on this. It's a very important question. Because if they can do that, the problem is that we're already not represented in any department of what I call the de facto national socialist government. If we can't get to the courts 
and more importantly, a common law jury of our peers to take over control. And juries, by the way, have the power to rule on the facts and the law. The Constitution mandates it, the Supreme Court recognizes it, and the whole history of the trial by jury, going back to England several hundred years ago, recognizes this truism too. And everyone that ratified the Constitution understood this was the case. But nowadays, you try to give instructions to a jury. That's why I'm winning so many of these cases by doing this. 572 jury instructions, and they strike them all at the stroke of a pen, like they're doing an impression of Donald Trump. There's no way to get to a jury trial, so therefore what they're saying is we're living in a democracy, or what I call lynch mob rule. It has to stop. That said, uh, you know, be sure to tell your friends, like the videos, subscribe, and send me for information at my Gmail at you, you win in court at gmail.com. Thank you.